G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, so it's Saturday here in Australia. Now the markets have sort of quietened down a little bit. There has been a little bit of a bounce back, but it's just kind of very still at the moment. So really, for me at least, I'm just waiting to see what's going to happen sort of, you know, tomorrow, which is Sunday Australian, but that's still kind of Saturday American, and even Monday Australian, which is still kind of Sunday uh, American. So, sorry, I got that wrong. So Sunday Australian, Saturday American, and Monday Australian, Sunday American, because really we're waiting to see what happens in the bigger markets. Is this going to be, we get pushed up, we just bounce from here, or is there still more downside to follow? And I've got some interesting articles that may sort of explain why we've been having a downtrend. At least some of it. It's not going to simply explain all of it. But let's have a look. All right, $1.489 trillion. So just under $1.5 trillion. But look, we were nearly at $1.8 trillion. So we have lost a fair amount of money there. Sort of $300 billion-ish thereabouts. BTC dominance dropped back down below 60%. ETH dominance has dropped below 12%. Uh, and gas fees, they are coming down, but still quite high. All right, let's have a look. We can see a bit of green there, particularly in the last hour. Although, I mean, you look at the seven day chart, there's a good chance we still might be going down. Except for Cardano, it is on an absolute tear at the moment. Uh, and again, there's a, a lot of bullish news around Cardano at the moment, and it's overtaken BNB only just. Uh, Polkadot sort of still down there. And yeah, very good times to be part of Cardano, but it won't last forever. There will be a correction coming in Cardano. And again, we'll have a look at a, a story very shortly about that. All right, in the last 24 hours, let's have a look. What's really pumped? Has anything really pumped? Right, res right, res right oh God, excuse me, reserve rights token, uh, good bounce back. Likewise, Elrond, Polygon, so Matic just continues to keep climbing. Climbing, sorry, Cardano doing well, Stacks, Cosmos, Polkadot, and look, a lot of kind of DeFi players in there, and again, I've got another story about DeFi coming up very shortly. I'm not sure if I've missed my chance to get into Elrond at a good, at a good price, you know, but we'll have to wait and see, and I've, if I've missed the boat, I've missed the boat. I mean, it was $7 at one stage, so anyone who was holding on to it for 7 and $8, it ranged there for a long time. They are absolutely cheering. I don't know what, that's probably a 20X or something like that. So yeah, I'm kicking myself, but what can you do? You can't, you can't call them all. Uh, I got into Polygon or Matic at a pretty good price and some other projects. Cardano as well, one of my better performers. So, you know, you win some and you lose some. Generally, most, I, I haven't traded any, well, I haven't traded much at a loss. I think I traded two coins at a loss and it wasn't massive losses. So yeah. Can't complain. All right, what about, you know, what's continued to retrace over the last 24 hours? All right, Phantom, yep, down another 24%. Again, it was always going to happen. And I mean, ZK Swap, that is literally just kind of fallen off a cliff here. But that is a classic Bart Head Simpson pattern there. So there was a bit of a manipulation, I'd say there, a bit of a pump and dump sort of thing going on. Voyager token, you know, down 7%, not too bad. It's still kind of traveling sideways. So look, really there's a couple of coins here that have had some fairly heavy retracement, but most of the coins now are just into those single digit kind of losses. But the weekend's not over yet and we still could see some more downside. And that's really what I'm looking out for before I kind of jump into anything. Again, for me, you know, if Bitcoin gets down to, like actually closes a candle around about the $42,000, $43,000 mark, then I'm going to buy some. But if it just sort of wicks down there, then I'm not really worried about it because I think this is just all short term and it's going to get ready to go up unless it comes down and closes at around about sort of 40, yeah, let's say 43,000, we get a candle close there, then I'll buy some and I'll be looking to buy some more because I think it'll possibly go a little bit lower. But if it's just wicking down there for like a split second, then I really do think it's just getting ready to go back up again. And we'll have a look. I've got some stories here that might uh, make you think the same way. But again, there's no guarantees in life and I never offer financial advice. Let's go have a look at the Bitcoin chart, number one. All right, so as we can see, we're still in that sort of downtrend. Yes, it's bounced here, but it bounced here as well. And then it rolled over again. So I really... I'm just waiting to see if we're going to come down to a roundabout here. Now, maybe not exactly the 50-day moving average. It's been a long time since we've really kind of touched it. We've wicked down to there. We got oh so close to touching it there. But really, we haven't touched it since, what was this? 
9th of October last year. So that's a pretty exuberant market. So it wouldn't be like horrible if we were to come back and touch this. And then again, you know, we've still got the the 100 day moving average and the 200 day moving average. Now, if we were to come back and touch the 200 day moving average, as long as we bounce from it, it would be okay. But because we've come from so high, so if we were to go from basically 60,000 down to, and I think that's around, oh, it's under the $30,000 mark, that probably means that we really are in a bear market because when we have touched the 200 day moving average on bull runs, it's because we've sort of been traveling sideways down around here and it just drops down. It doesn't come from a peak and just dump all the way down to it. But, you know, we'll wait and see. I, I, th I think there's still a lot more bullish things to come. Uh, and this is just part of a cycle. It can't always go up. You've got to have this kind of thing happen to shake out the weak hands and see who's here for the for the you know for the right reasons and not just a quick flip. I want to double my money. Well, if you want to double your money, you basically need to wait for it to come back and hit one of these you know markers. And it might not be the 50-day moving average to double your money. It might be you have to wait for the 100 or the 200-day moving average to double your money. And that means you might have to wait a really long time, i.e., the next bear market. We'll have to wait and see. All right, so we go back here, have a look, and this is going to lead into the first story. Hello, my dear old friend. <laughs> Cardano, out of nowhere, really has screamed up the ranks, and now it is number three. It's been doing extremely well. Look, this has just recently changed. This was green, but again, this is just on the hourly, so it can fluctuate all over the place. But Cardano, it is in price discovery right now. It is, uh, you know, about a dollar eighteen ish is generally what people say. But I think there was one or two exchanges out there that got to about a dollar thirty something in the last bull run. So, you know, we may technically not be uh, in price discovery, depending on how you're looking at looking at it. But I thought it was a dollar eighteen uh, was the highest I ever saw it got. So for me, I consider this to be price discovery. Now, what we've found, though, is when we've got into price discovery, both from Bitcoin, Ethereum, and maybe it's going to happen to Cardano, is it kind of gets up there and then you do have a retracement and it falls back down. So maybe we're going to have a bit of a sell-off from Cardano soon. So we go over here and it says Cardano beats BNB and enters the top three of the world's largest cryptocurrencies. So again, to anyone who got into Cardano at a nice, nice cheap price, I think the cheapest I got it was... Oh, eight cents i might have got it for eight cents or a little bit less but i think it was around about eight cents i've bought some cardano since but the the bulk of what i bought was at eight cents and again hindsight's a beautiful thing i only wish i had have put in more you know i put in the bulk of the money that i had into things like bitcoin and ethereum and don't get me wrong they've done well i'm, I'm not complaining by any stretch of the imagination but you know my eight cents cardano it's basically sort of you know 20 x just about well it's gone more than 20x it's done quite well uh, I can't complain not at all now we go over here though Cardano's 35 billion dollar market cap is not justified says Ethereum proponent that's a bit of FUD I mean there's probably some sort of slight truth to it maybe but look it's come from an Ethereum proponent they're gonna say that about anything that's you know moving up fast and starting to cover ground on Ethereum Ethereum it would, and I don't want to put it all just on Vitalik, but you know, Vitalik and Ethereum, they've got no one to blame but themselves if they continue to lose ground. The gas prices are just horrendous. I've spoken about this for months and months on end. Until that is fixed, Cardano, BNB, Polkadot, Cosmos, Tezos, you name it, there's a number of projects out there that are just going to come and swallow up ground. And if Ethereum doesn't get it fixed sooner rather than later, they really just may get taken over and they'll, you know, they've got the first mover advantage, a lot of people building on it at the moment, but well, I don't know about at this very moment right now, I think maybe people haven't, but yeah, the quicker they get something like that sorted, the better. I don't think they could wait till the end of the year or another year and a half for that. For the ETH 2.0 maybe, but they absolutely need layer two solutions to really come and get on top of things at the moment because otherwise, I see Cardano, BNB, Polkadot, you know, Cosmos, all those other ones. They'll just they'll take over. It won't take that much if this keeps, you know, if the gas gas prices stay so high. Outside of you know, kind of the super rich, so they'll use it because they can handle those gas fees. 
No one else will. And that is where Cardano uh, and all these other smaller chains, not that Cardano is small, but smaller, they'll just take over. And if they get on a real run, Ethereum may never catch up again. I'm not saying that's what's going to happen. That's just what I think could happen if certain things play out. All right, so we go over here. Wall Street asset manager Stone Ridge files to add Bitcoin to its diversified alternatives fund. So Stone Ridge is an asset manager with $13 billion in AUM, assets under management, and it plans to add Bitcoin to its fund, focusing on alternative investments. So again, anyone who thinks this is all over and you know the, the market's done for, they're not silly. They're not gonna get in at the peak of the market. It's just, it's unlikely. As I said the other day, there's only about 5% of institutions here. That is a tiny, tiny, tiny amount. We still haven't got the institutional FOMO that may come in this. I don't know if it's see, that's what I'm starting to think. I'm not sure if the institutional FOMO will come in this bull run. We're only gonna get the first investors. And again, they're gonna to have to ride the highs and ride the lows. They may actually lose, you know, 20, 30% uh, of their, you know, the price of what they're holding in the next bear market. But then when it starts to go up from there, then again, as long as they haven't panicked and sold and all the rest of it, and when they start to see it go up again, that's when the institutions will, the ones that haven't come, so the other 95%, they're gonna go, all right, yeah, they bought in at 50,000. It went up to, you know, let's say 100,000. It came back down to about 30,000. And now it's back to 70,000. Jesus, yeah, we better get in on this because, yeah, it'll go maybe a little bit lower than where we bought in. But if we simply hold long enough, we will be in profit. And that's when the real institutional FOMO is going to start. This is great that we've got these early movers, early movers Square, you know, PayPal, Grayscale, Grayscale, Tesla and that, but we haven't got the real FOMO yet. They haven't shown up just yet. All right, now I brought a story the other day about Nigeria seeming really bearish on cryptocurrencies and like they were basically gonna ban it. Here's a story that I'm really, really happy about. So in an apparent rebuke of the Central Bank of Nigeria, the Vice President of Nigeria, Yemi Osinbajo says the country's monetary authorities must consider regulating crypto assets. He added that instead of killing the goose that may lay the golden egg, I love that analogy, Nigerian monetary authorities must consider a robust regulatory regime. I, well, yeah, I suppose robust, I can hang with that. Don't regulate it so much that you kill it but that addresses their concerns because I, I agree with their concerns. And eventually, you know, the big cryptocurrencies that do get adopted mainstream, they won't have the fluctuations that they do. But it's because you get in early, that is why. If you're in now before everybody else, yes, you're gonna, you know, ride some lows that are gonna hurt. But once we get to that kind of ultimate high where it just kind of levels off and we don't have the really high spikes and the really low spikes, you know, Again, never financial advice, just my personal opinion, but you'll be probably sitting pretty. Again, there's talk about Bitcoin being worth a million dollars one day. Yeah, it may take another five or 10 years. And yes, you may have to buy it at you know $40,000 right now, watch it go to maybe 80,000, watch it come back down to 30,000 before it goes to a million. But if you hold, you believe, you've done your research, I am more than happy to buy something at $30,000 and wait 10 years for it to become worth a million. I, I got no problems. I'll do that all day, every single day, but that's me. Now, still in his, still in his address at Bankers Committee meeting, uh, Austin Bajo says he fully appreciates the position that has been articulated by the Central Bank, uh, whatever it is, and what is Central Bank, uh, of Nigeria, uh, since the CNB prohibition went into effect, leaders at both the C CBN sorry, and the Nigeria Securities, Securities, struggling today again, Exchange Commission have defended this decision. However, in his speech, the Nigerian Vice President suggests that the country's regulators must consider embracing emer emerging and disruptive technologies. Pointing to the past impact of some dis disruptive innovations, the Vice President said, as seen in many other sectors, disruption makes room for efficiency and progress. 
And that is so true. If you're just so, you know, kind of risk adverse and you never want to move away from the system that you have, you can only develop that system so far and eventually it's got to, it will have got to its peak and it just can't get any better. You will have to look for something new. Something new will come along. It always does. Bitcoin's not going to be around forever. It could be around for another 100, 400, 500,000 years. Who knows? But at some stage, there will be something else. That's just the way it is. And that's what we're seeing right now in our financial system. It's been run the same way for such a long time. And now there is something new that's a bit scary. It's a bit volatile and all over the place. But when it truly gets adopted mainstream and everybody's using it, you won't have that volatility anymore. And if you got in early, which could be now, maybe it's not, who knows? I believe it is. Again, in 5 to 10 to 15 years time from now, if you picked up Bitcoin for, you know, $40,000 and it's gone to a million or 5 million or 10 million or whatever it may go to, I literally don't know. I can't even, I'm not even sure if, if it will go to a million, but let's just say it does. You won't even bat an eyelid that you paid 50000 for it and watched it turn into maybe 30000 at one stage over that 10 years before it finally made a million. All right, again, another story, you know, should we be overly worried about this correction, even if it continues and we go lower, maybe we hit, you know, in the $30,000 range. China's Bitcoin mining rig manufacturers pressed by demand. Advanced orders and devices are sold out. Does this sound like something that is super bearish to you? Again, this is just my opinion. I don't think this sounds bearish at all. That doesn't mean the market can't retrace. It will always do that. It will correct itself from a little bit of an over-exuberance. And the weak hands will sell and they'll panic and they'll cry and they'll lose their money and they'll probably say they're never coming back and it may take a really long time for them to come back. But those who are a little bit smarter and have been around a while, they are going to be sitting pretty. People don't rush out and buy these things and well in advance thinking that, you know, the market's going to crash tomorrow. If they think it's going to crash tomorrow, they're going to wait till tomorrow to order these kind of things to, you know, because that's why these are sold out because everyone is so bullish. Don't get me wrong. They may, you know, fortunately or unfortunately, depending, not get these until we are in the middle of another bear market. But again, once you hit the bottom of the bear market, wherever that is, it's only upside from there. So again, they may have to wait, you know, till next year to get these when Bitcoin goes from, let's say it makes it 100,000, sh- I think it'll go higher, but let's say it makes it to 100,000 and then dips back down to, I don't know, let's go 10 or $15,000. If they start mining them at 10 or $15,000 and they may be losing a little bit of money at first, as the price just starts to go up again, they're just gonna be sitting in the green. They're gonna be laughing. Now, again, that's just my personal opinion. Who knows? All right, let's have a look at some things that may be playing into why the market has been going down. All right, 3.3 billion in uh, Bitcoin options expired today. Now, not only that, but in addition to the Bitcoin investments, Almost half a million dollars worth of ETH uh, options also expired today. Now, generally, when they're about to expire, there's a bit of a sell-off right around about that time. So they can then get some cash and buy into new ones and things like that. Doesn't always happen like that, but I think, you know, Bitcoin and Ethereum options closing on the same day probably has something to do with the price coming down. I can't guarantee that. You know, I'm not, I'm not an expert. That But I've seen this happen before. And again, there's also F2 pools been selling. And look, other people have been selling, particularly the weak hands. Anyone who bought in at, you know, let's say 58,000, they're probably gone. They couldn't have held down to 40 something thousand. They would have panicked at probably 55,000, 52,000, definitely at, you know, sort of 49,000. They would have panicked and just sold out. Unless they had steel hands and then they're still here and they're just holding in their belief that it's going up. And that's where I am. I mean, I didn't buy any Bitcoin at 58,000, but I have bought some, uh, sorry, I sold some at 47,000 and the price is above that already. So we'll wait and see whether it was, you know, for me, it was a smart decision. I wanted to have cash on the side. And so that's what I did. It was only a very small amount of Bitcoin that I sold. uh, As well, I've already said, I sold 10% of basically all my cryptocurrencies uh, around about a week ago, just so I had cash sitting on the side. 
And look, that 10% may just simply stay sold until the bottom of the next bear market. I'm not, there's no guarantees that I'm gonna jump back in. I mean, if the price just keeps skyrocketing from here, then all right, cool, I got some cash sitting on the side for whenever. All right, something else. Bitcoin looks indecisive after sell-off in bonds and tech stocks. So Bitcoin is still following with the regular market. Right, Bitcoin mostly traded sideways on Friday after a steep drop overnight to as low as 44,000. Uh, and it timed with a steep sell-off in bonds and technology stocks. So the big boys are here and they're all trading the thing, you know, all of it at the same sort of time. At press time, the largest cryptocurrency was changing hands at 47,000 and was down 6.2% in the past 24 hours. So, you know, particularly tech stocks, uh, Bitcoin and, you know, cryptocurrencies follows tech stocks uh, a lot more than it follows anything else. Uh, and if bonds are selling off and then the tech stocks go, well, you can guarantee cryptocurrency is going as well. There's people that have to make up the difference. And so that's what they'll do with Bitcoin. Uh, yeah, and just cryptocurrencies in general. So we've got some ideas of why things are coming down. But gee, we had some stuff about why it should be going up. Again, Nigeria, not getting completely out of crypto and not over-regulating it. You know, Bitcoin miners are still, you know, they're, bought out probably months in advance and they could be even a year in advance so this is all a bullish narrative again yes we could retrace lower absolutely but there's so much bullish narrative out there that i think that's only a matter of time until all the weak hands or those that want to sell have stopped selling and the buying starts to override again and again look if bitcoin gets down to sort of forty three thousand dollars forty two thousand dollars that's it i'm buying some and I'll start to buy as we go down. It's just, if it doesn't go below that, I'm not interested in buying at the moment because I think it's likely just gonna keep going up and I'd rather have my cash sitting on the side for another time where then it's a more significant significant kind of pullback from where I sold anyway. Like I said, I sold at 47,000. It would have been nice if I had sold at 58,000, but I can't read and time the markets that well. Uh, I was a, you know probably about a week out from that actual top. And again, I'm all right with that. I've got cash on the side. Right, last but not least, this story I am absolutely loving. DeFi mainstays headline Grayscale's list of new products under consideration. Now, we spoke about this before, but they've came out and officially kind of named them. So in a press release today, the issuer of popular exchange traded products such as Bitcoin backed Grayscale Bitcoin Trust announced a list of new assets under consideration. And over a third or eight of the 23 come from Ethereum's De DeFi ecosystem. And this is partly why I'm not, you know, completely down on uh, Ethereum, like, you know, the gas fees are going to ruin it forever. If they don't get them fixed, it will. But I do believe they're going to be on top of them sooner rather than later. And, you know, my personal opinion is they're just going to hold it off for as long as they can so they can do as much testing as they can. But once they kind of get to a push point where, all right, we've got to, bring it out now they'll bring it out and they'll have done enough testing i really do think they've got solutions and things that could go now but they just want to hold it off long enough to do as much testing as they can you know to be as sure as they can they don't want to put something out that's going to fail uh and you know ruin the whole ecosystem and the longer they can hold off putting it out and the longer they can test it the better off everyone is now continuing Aave, compound MakerDAO, ReserveRite, SushiSwap, Synthetics Token, Uniswap, uh, Yearn Finance, they have joined increasing popular layer one chain uh, assets such as Polkadot, Cosmos and Cardano on the list. A sign of the great repricing may be picking up steam. So I think this is massive bullish news. Now yes there's been some uh, people who haven't been happy with some of the things that Grayscale have invested in, like Ripple. Uh, they got rid of Ripple, and I'm not hating on Ripple. I've still got some XRP. Uh, you know, Bitcoin Cash, again, I don't know whether it's you know really going to be around in the future or not. Uh, Ethereum Classic, I don't know if that's going to be around in the future or not either. But look, Aave, you know, they've got licenses in places uh, over in, I think they've got a a European financial license and it wouldn't be I wouldn't be surprised if they have more financial licenses coming in other parts of the world I know they were moving into Asia so yeah I, I see big things coming from Aave I mean synthetics network they are the first mover they've got such a great platform I mean once you can you know 
get onto the layer two solutions and past all the fees and things like that, Synthetics is a great, great platform and they have that first mover advantage. And not only that, they're constantly developing. I love what uh, Kane and his entire team is doing. Uniswap, likewise, you know, that really has an amazing future ahead of it. It needs to get layer two done oh so quick and yearn finance. I mean, I, I never bought it and I don't hate it. I am somewhat worried that, you know, they can just get together and vote that more coins are made. That is, you know, you know, for me, I would have bought it because there's only 21,000. Then, you know, to find out, oh, no, now we're going to 23,000. All right, in 10 years, we're going to 50,000. All right, in X amount of years, you know, it just keeps going up. Yeah, that's kind of what has put me off a little bit. But look, I still understand Yearn Finance is going to be at the forefront, you know, of the new new de decentralized finance was the word I was looking for. All right, I'd love to know your thoughts down below. Are you, you know, bullish on these products now that Grayscale has officially come out and said, yep, we're looking into these projects? And generally when they say they're looking into it, they're already buying it. Like it's already happening. You know, they rarely ever kind of bring out news and say, oh, we decided not to because they would have already done their research on it. So for me, I have Aave, uh, I have our Synthetics Network. I don't have any of the others, but I do have Polkadot. I do have Cosmos, Cosmos and I do have Cardano. So yeah, super, super bullish. And again, I do think DeFi is really going to lead the charge. Sure, we're having a pullback here. I'm sure it could go lower. But I don't think it's the end by any stretch of the imagination. I think we have until at least August, September this year and maybe even longer. We will just have to wait and see. All right, let me know your thoughts down below if you're into any of these coins and if you're more bullish on them now because Grayscale is talking about getting into them. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Pretty hard to be on that gain train at the moment, but if you are, congratulations to you. You've outsmarted the market, and I'll see you next time.